What is going on everybody? David here from Blooker's Videos and Toys and today we are going to be taking a look at Series 1 WWE Superstars Bray Wyatt. Now, the only time that I remember ever seeing this particular outfit that Bray is wearing is maybe on a segment uh, where he was in the Firefly Funhouse doing a segment with uh, Alexa Bliss. I don't know if he wore it more than once or not. Uh, if y'all remember this particular outfit and seen it more than once, please let me know. <laughs> but I do know he wore it at least once during one segment. And um, it's pretty cool. You know, I like it. It's different. We we don't have a, a, a WWE Elite figure of this particular outfit or a basic of any kind or an ultimate edition of this particular uh, figure with this outfit. But I'm very happy that we do have this outfit because even though it is, if it is a one-off appearance, it's very cool to have a, a figure of it. Especially in this uh, style of figure, this He-Man style of figure. And i uh, very happy to have this particular uh, style of figure in the collection. As I am a huge fan of the He-Man style, 5 POA style figures like the Rimco and things like that. <clears throat> And there are other companies out there currently that do make this particular style of figures. But anyways, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting off track. Um, even though this particular, these kind of figures here that Mattel's makes, whether it's the WWE Masters of the Universe figures or the Superstars line, they have a way more articulation than, um, than the old school ones did when they had the five POAs. But anyways, so I did get this on clearance, so very happy about that. Um, I always thought the the, uh, the twenty dollar price point was pretty expensive, but I do understand the uh, the reason behind it. You know, inflation and plus the fact that you know these particular figures come with uh, soft goods, so of course they tend to be a little bit more pricey. NECA does it, you know, they're a little bit more expensive when they do their figures with cloth goods, you know, just anything in general, you know. It is what it is. But if you're able to get it on clearance like this, then by all means, you know, go for it. And I'm just happy that I did. But anyways, so, I always liked the uh, Bray Wyatt as a character. Um, especially the Fiend character. But I think that all died for me when he suffered that clean loss to Goldberg. You know, lost his belt and stuff. But other than that, I just don't think it's he's ever been the same as far as that character goes. But anyways, so this is get let's get into it. Enough blabbling. So this is the actual basic uh superstars packaging. Uh it says that includes hat and jacket, so I'm pretty sure all that stuff is removable removable. <laughs> and it says uh Bray Wyatt right there. And on the back of the packaging, it says WWE Superstars right here, Series 1, right there. And then Firefly Funhouse, Yowie Wowie, welcome to the Firefly Funhouse. And then here is the cross-sell of all the figures that come in Series 1. It says, let me in. The Honky Tonk Man, Hollywood Hogan, and Ric Flair. I do have these two, so I would like to eventually get Flair and Honky Tonk. So, let's go ahead and open this thing up. Alright, so we got Bray Wyatt out of his packaging. And he does come with two sets of hands, including the ones that he has on him right now. So, we just go ahead and open this little baggie up. And, let's see what kind of hands he's got. Me. Try to open this up. Think about these little baggies, they like to heavily tape, which is good, but it's a pain in the ass sometimes. Alright, finally was able to open this little baggie up. And like I said, it comes with uh, two sets of hands. And comes with two fist hands. That's cool. And 
comes with two open hands where it says uh, hurt and uh, heal. So that's pretty cool out there. I love how they just let that flesh colored. <laughs> but that's how it is when you got a extra part there and it just slides in there. But all this other stuff is painted on, so that's cool. And so for the figure itself. Yeah, I really do like this figure. He's a little too skinny. Needs to be a little bit more chunkier. But these are the He-Man style figures, so that's what you expect as far as the the body mold goes for for all of these figures. Unless if you're a really super heavyweight like earthquake or typhoon but um other than that you know overall the figure does look good um as far as the material for the coat it's kind of flimsy a little bit it's not as thick you can see through it and stuff so kind of cheapened a little bit you know but uh but yeah so let's see if we can take his hat off. If his hat is removed, it is removed. Okay, I, I didn't think so. I didn't think it was. But um, you know, I guess this is the way it was looking. So, but yeah, the hat is removable. It is a soft, pliable plastic, kind of like a rubber feel to it. You know, got that nine, 19 and 11 right there. You know, sitting in the hat. So I got that nice little red paint around the the rim so just got a little bit of sloppiness a little bit but other than that you know looks good here but then you could tell it kind of slopped out a little bit on the other side not as evenly painted as it is right here so I guess they were trying to avoid the that card part you know that's why they kind of thinned it out the way they did Overall, it's a good hat. You know, good looking hat. And then it comes with this big old bow tie. Pretty sure if you pop off the head that it's removable. So, let's go ahead and do that right now. Alright, so I was able to remove the, uh, the bow tie. And it looks a little bit oversized. You can tell it's a little bit oversized. But it works for what it is. And so it's got that little stretchy uh, bendy right there, so can have a little give to it, you know, when you're removing it and putting it back on. So, so I'd be careful with it. And so I was able to remove his coat, and uh, like I said, it is a little, a little cheap, but it works for what it's supposed to do. And you can tell that here is that little uh, rubbery plastic. For the collar all the way around here and um, I'm afraid in, over time that this might rot out a little bit you know because that's how some of the old toy biz figures that come with cloth goods and some of it that has this kind of a uh, material it, it, it does rot out and flake off and stuff so but then again that was years ago you know so this is now but again you know back then figures was a little bit more sturdier than they are now so they're not as cheaply they weren't as cheaply made then as they are now so but uh overall you know um this could probably easily tear over time if you use this a lot you know on and off your figures and stuff but if you're just uh just displaying it on the shelf you know then you should be okay but, uh, but, yeah, I'm afraid over time, doing how much, depending on how much usage you get out of this thing, this thing can easily tear, you know. But anyways, so let's go ahead and put his stuff aside. Let's go ahead and put these hands over here as well. 
and take a look at Bray himself. So as you can tell, his uh, torso and uh, main body here is a little bit oversized, but it looks a little bigger due to, to how the uh, coat is uh, put on him. But the cool thing about this particular figure is of all the tattoos he has on him. So that's really cool. Now we'll do a comparison with the uh, the Motu Fiend, or the the WWE Motu figure of the Fiend. We'll compare it to here, as that figure does not have any tattoos at all on it, but this one does. So that's what makes it pretty unique. Um, <clears throat> so as far as the head goes, uh, the head looks really good. You can tell that is Bray Wyatt. Um, you can tell that here. With the mustache and beard. Uh, it looks pretty decent for the most part. Because a lot of times a lot of these figures. It's, they're really hard to um, find a really good clean head sculpt. With a, a good beard on it. Guys like Triple H. You know. Bray. And other characters that have supported beard. You know. You always want to look. And see how good this the beard. And this was the best one out of the two that I saw that were on clearance. So, like I said, it looks pretty clean for the most part. You can tell they missed a little bit on the stash right there and right there. But overall, for the for beard's sake, it, it's pretty clean. You can tell they missed a little bit there. But it's more, you know, less noticeable on that side. I don't know why. I think that's just a factory thing. Who knows? But uh, great head sculpt. Great lightness to Bray, you know. Love the the hair, how it's sculpted in like that, and the the head shaved on the sides, you know. So it looks really good. I'm gonna go ahead and take the head off so we can get a good clean look at the uh, the neck tattoo. So you can see here the tattoos on his neck right there is really clean right there, and um, what impressed me the most about this, even though this these are all separate pieces. The main body itself, right here, it's got some nice tattoo work right there. Now, I don't know exactly if these are all accurate 100%. It's like I got a little piece of uh, paint chip right there. But I'm going to have his coat on, so it's not like I'm going to be looking at his back like that. <laughs> but um, as far as the tattoo work on the figure itself, it's uh, pretty impressive. You know, for what for what the for the for what this figure is representing, you know, and the style of figure. So that's that's also really good right there too as well. And then the tattoos on his arm looks really good, clean. So whoever did the work of of this particular figure did an excellent job, you know. You know like I said, I don't know if all of these tattoos are accurate. To what he really has in real life but as far as a figure standpoint for this type of body style it's it's pretty good i know the elite ones and the ultimate ones are get pretty good too and i think um <clears throat> this one's on par as well so if you look on this arm right here it's pretty clean too So right there underneath the bicep, see, right there, not so much here, so I guess he didn't have any work there, but under here, wraps around, right there, right there, so overall, that's, that's clean work, alright, let's go ahead and put his head back on, so, but, and so then, here is the lower half right there. And as far as the details, got the wrinkling in the pants right there. The back. And the sides right here. And the boots are nicely detailed. So you can tell they went the extra miles. They put the other little details of the boots right here itself. And then here are the hands right here. So it looks like here the heel, the L, rubbed off. 
you know, you can tell it's just a little, just get the H-E-A, and then the, the L is missing, it's all but right there, that little piece right there, and then here, as far as the hurt, you got, you got all of the, you got all of it right there, so, but overall, this uh, figure is really clean, you know, Side of it, a couple of flaws right here. The little paint chip right there in the back, and then the uh, the L missing right there on the glove. So, and these hands are all interchangeable too as well. So, but I really do, yeah. I'm really impressed with this figure, especially with the tattoo work that they did. You know, like I said, I don't know if it's all of it's there or they just went by what they could use. Because I know sometimes some tattoo artists, they uh, they have copyright claims on certain work. And uh, if you use it on figures and stuff, you know, then, you know, they want they want that money. <laughs> so, any of you that uh, are Bray Wyatt fans that are familiar with uh, his tattoo work and stuff, let me know in the comments below what you think of um, how this figure turned out. And what kind of work that you notice that is there and that might be missing, you know, would love to know. Cause like I said, I'm really impressed with the, all the work that's been done right there. Alright, so as far as articulation goes, you know, heads on the ball, swivel up and down. So, to pop the head on and off, just like that. And then the arms up and down, ball and hinge, forwards, backwards, you know, side to side, like that, and then you got a single hinge and a swivel at the elbow, there, and of course, keep in mind, all these uh, figures are interchangeable parts, so, but if you try to use brace parts, you know, some of them will have tattoos, some of them won't, and then you get the swivel at the waist right there, and then the the wrist rotate, got a swivel and a hinge like that, right there, then as far as the feet goes, forwards and backwards, so, do the Van Dam, and then um, single hinge and swivel at the knee, and then here you got a, a very limited, if any at all, you know, hinge and then ankle rockers, just because of the fact where the pants are right there so you really don't got much movement there you know, just a little bit if any just slight bend so maybe that's just mine you know but anyways so let's go ahead and pop these hands off and put the other ones on there and take a close look at them alright here's Bray with his two fisted hands Looks really good, you know, without his gloves. So, looks really nice and clean. They're easy to take on and off. And then here is Bray with the open hands when it says hurt and heal. So, that looks really good as well. Alright, so we just put back the hands that he originally came with. And let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. Here is Bray compared to his Uncle Barry and Papa IRS and uh, Barry Wyndham is the Gloop version and IRS is the Hasbro uh, version and you can tell they're a bit, a bit undersized compared to uh, the Superstars figures but um, good figures to have so glad to have them in my collection. And here is Bray compared to his uh, Fiend counterpart from the WWE Motu collection. And um, you can tell the big difference as far as the uh, arms go where the Fiend doesn't have any tattoos at all. But uh, Bray does. So very interesting there how they did that. But I do like them together so I think it's great. Uh, thing to add to the collection if you're into the style of figures, you know, if you can find a fiend to go with the Bray if you have one, you know, I think they, they do complement each other and everything.
And then there is Bray with his full attire next to the Fiend. So, like I said, I think they, they both look really good next to each other. Alright, so that is my review of the WWE Superstar Series 1 Bray Wyatt. Uh, I really do like this figure, especially with all the tattoo work that they did for the arms, neck, and, and back, you know. And I think that was very impressive how they was able to include that into this particular line and figure and um overall you know i'm very happy with it you know the, my only concern is the coat that in due time you know depending on how much usage you get out of it um that it can kind of tear and and the the collar part you know the neck you know right here would start to flake off or tear too as well um so just be careful when you taking the coat on and off you know whenever you whatever you decide to do with your brave figure you know but um overall i think it's a great figure you know if you're into the style of figure i highly recommend it and i highly recommend this entire line you know and uh don't forget where's the wisdom buy what you love and not what you like because if you buy what you like you will always end up getting rid of it and i will catch y'all later